All right, we are back live to break down the Philadelphia Eagles, led by QB Eagles, Randall Cunningham. In 1990, leading up into the, to this game, the Philadelphia Eagles went 10 and 6 and missed the playoffs. And in 1991, they also went 10 and 6 and they made the playoffs. So you could see the consistency with the Philadelphia Eagles in the early 90s. Now, let's start off with Randall Cunningham. He is truly a unique player in this game. He's the only true rushing quarterback with that 56 maximum speed. No other quarterback compares to Randall Cunningham in maximum speed. Happy New Year. The chat box is open. I will get to most of the chat after I break down the team and the matchups. So, Randall Cunningham. He's 56. He can rush all over the field. That means if you pick a passing play, there's a good chance you're going to break a run as well. So, he's the only guy that can truly do that. You have other quarterbacks that have a 31 maximum speed, but that makes him more of a scrambling quarterback. You're not going to break too many big runs down the field. But that's not all Randall's good at. He's actually great at passing as well. His passing speed is 63, which is very good. And his pass control is 69. The pass control also controls the accuracy of the passing and the calculations if the receiver is going to catch the ball or not. Accuracy of passing, don't pay attention to that statistic. It doesn't do anything. And a good avoid pass block, 63 for him. Now there's no way you're putting in the funky QB with an attitude. You're going to leave him with that attitude on the bench. He doesn't bring anything to the table over Randall even if he's in bad condition. He's a 6 maximum speed, passing speed 38, pass control 38. Yeah, so he's sticking it out on the bench. Eagles running backs. Unfortunately, the Eagles running backs are pretty slow. In the Tecmo Madison tournament, you're not going to be able to, to put a receiver or tight end on this team at running back, so you're going to have to stick with Keith Byers with a 31 maximum speed. The one thing I can say about Keith Byers is he is he's a good catching running back with that 69 receptions, so he has some flexibility. You could put him at receiver if you want to mix him up on the field not too fast as a running back but he does have that 69 receptions that will help you get those covered catches Heath Sherman's a little bit faster 38 maximum speed 38 hitting power ball control 31 and receptions 31 not too great hopefully the the thing you could hope for is that Heath Sherman's condition will go up through the course of the game putting him in excellent and putting them at a better maximum speed. Anthony Tony not bringing too much more to the table. A little bit better ball control. But um, you might want to check his condition throughout the course of the game. Just because the Eagles running backs, you know, they're, they're really just not that good. Robert Drummond, 38 maximum speed. So he's the same as Sherman. You definitely want to check his speed throughout the course of the game or his condition to see if his ratings go up and uh, hitting power 31 ball control 50 kind of weak on receptions with only 25 at receiver they are not fast so Fred Barnett pretty good with that 56 receptions 38 maximum speed so he's not a burner but he'll get you some catches Calvin Williams same thing, 31 maximum speed, more of a possession receiver with 50 ball control, 50 receptions. Mike Quick, receiver, you're leaving him on the bench. He's not bringing anything to the table. Kenny Jackson, not to get confused with Keith Jackson, is another pine rider, unfortunately. He's not doing too good with his ratings. Only a 25 maximum speed, 13 hitting power. Keith Jackson, here's your number one receiver at tight end. He's got the ratings to back it up. 50 maximum speed, 
Not a good running speed at the snap of the ball, but that's okay. He makes up for it with his hitting power and his 63 in reception. So target Keith Jackson early and often. He will be catching some balls and getting some covered catches. Harper LaBelle, pretty good hitting power of 50, but doesn't bring anything else to the table. Maybe you put him in. No, you don't put him in. Okay, so the Eagles, as good as, as much as they're a top 10 team in this game, most of that's because of QB Eagles and Randall Cunningham. The offensive line is weak. You have a 38 hitting power at center, and then left guard's 50, Ron Soltz 38 hitting power, Ron Heller's 50, and Singletary is at 50. So what that means is that defensive linemen are susceptible to coming in on this team and throwing these guys very quickly. Luckily, you got Randall Cunningham scrambling around in the backfield trying to rush, trying to pass, so you can make up for that poor offensive line. Roger, Roger Rusek, he's got a 50 kicking ability that's average. That will get you about a 68-yard field goal, if my calculations are correct. Avoid kick block isn't too good. Jeff Fiegels, he's a punter. And he's average. All right, let's get to the Eagles' defense. The Eagles' defense is interesting as well. The Eagles are just, you know, that one wild card team that, you know, their their talent is lopsided. So on the defensive line, they're very good. You got Clyde Simmons, 50 maximum speed. All right, thanks. It's Nick, right? Yes, I'll get to the chat box after the team breakdown and also the matchup. So you got Clyde Simmons. He's 50 maximum speed, 50 hitting power. That's good. Only interceptions, 19, but you can expect that from the lineman. Mike Golick from Mike and Mike on ESPN. Here he is, the nose tackle, 38 maximum speed, 50 hitting power, 31 interception. That's pretty good for a D lineman. So he's solid there. And then Reggie White, a stud on the line. 56 maximum speed. That's fast for a D lineman. 69 hitting power. That's close to the top in the game. And he also has a 31 reception. So you could use him in a little bit of coverage in some situations. So you got a good D line there. And then you got a couple strong linebackers as well, and you're going to be using these guys a lot. I'm not talking about Jesse Small. He's a 38 maximum speed, 44 hitting power. Jerome Brown, right inside linebacker, 56 maximum speed, 69 hitting power. You're going to be using him a lot. He's in a good position to blitz as well. You get right through the line, just walk right. Well, you're not walking. You're running right in through the center, and the guard, and you're trying to sack the quarterback, you can use him for that or coverage, but he's only a 19 interceptions. But he will be hitting people pretty hard. Byron Evans is just an average to below average linebacker with 38 maximum speed, 44 hitting power. And then Seth Joyner is another strong linebacker on the left side. Maximum speed, 50, 63 hitting power. 31 interceptions, you can use him for a little bit of coverage. So the good thing about the Eagles is you could switch between Joyner and Jerome Brown as your user controlled defender. Also Reggie White because he's got some speed. Um, and these guys are, are technically on opposite sides of the defense, which is a good thing. Now the Eagles secondary, this is where they are also weak. Eagles secondary, Eric Allen... They're weak because they're slow. He's 44 maximum speed. Hitting power is pretty good. 50 for a defensive back. And 50 interceptions isn't bad either. But 44 maximum speed. And then Ben Smith does not help him out. At the other corner at a 38 maximum speed. 50 interceptions. And only a 31 hitting power. 
Wes Hopkins, very slow at safety, 19 maximum speed. That's brutal. He's a 50 hitting power, and the interceptions is pretty good, so 56. And then Andre Waters, another 19 at maximum speed. These safeties are tremendously weak. 25 interceptions. So they're not saving you much back there. So your punt returner is only going to have a 19 maximum speed based off of the strong safety speed. He'll take that. So that is poor. And then your kick returner is going to have a 25 maximum speed. So you're going to put Keith Jackson there because he has the highest hit power. 25 maximum speed is just about average. All right, so that's the Philadelphia Eagles team. Let's talk about the matchups before we get into a game. Okay, Philadelphia Eagles. They, Like I said, they are a wild card when it comes to playing them in the tournament. They're usually a team I stay away from calling and that's because you just don't know what your opponent's capable of with Randall Cunningham. He might be the most broken player in the game because of his ability to rush at quarterback. If your opponent knows what he's doing with Randall Cunningham, you may have zero chance at stopping him. So, who would I call if I had to call a matchup with the Philadelphia Eagles? Well, I had a really hard time going through the teams to actually look at what teams I would call, but I, I came down to two teams, and I'll explain why. The first team is the Bears. The Bears are also a, a lopsided team as far as their talent. Like the Eagles, the Eagles have three weaknesses. They have slow receivers, they have a weak offensive line, and they have a poor secondary. The Bears have a Poor passing game. They have to bring up in their backup Mike Tomzak to do the dirty work. And he is, I believe, only a 38 pass control. So even though the Eagles secondary is really slow, they still have a chance at picking off uh, Tomzak or if they leave in Harbaugh. So the Bears do have the defensive speed to try to contain Randall Cunningham. Because they are an elite defensive team in this game. And they have a strong running game. So you have lopsided talent. And that's what leads me to also believe the Raiders and Eagles are a good matchup. Yeah, Steelers and Giants have great defenses as well. Those are probably... Well, there's, a, there's quite a few good defenses. 49ers, Bills have good defenses. But yeah, all those teams have great defenses, even the Vikings. Um, so the Raiders are another matchup that you may choose. Now, you it's tough giving people Bo Jackson, but you can definitely do it. You can slow down Bo Jackson. The Raiders also have poor quarterbacks. They don't have high pass controls. They're not in the 40s, so they are also susceptible to throwing some picks. So in those kind of matchups, Raiders, Bears, Eagles, so if you got Eagles versus Bears or Eagles versus Raiders, the you can guess pass a lot if you're the Bears or the Raiders and you're playing the Eagles. What I mean by guess pass is so you blitz in and break up the play. And then the other way around, if you're using the Eagles and you're playing the Raiders or the Bears, you could guess run a lot and hope to contain the pass game with uh, your user defender as the Eagles. So they're all top 10 teams in the game, but they all have lopsided talents to them. So those are the two teams I would I would match them up with. There's a few wild card teams that you could pick as well. I, I, f I fig figure the Bengals and the Chiefs wouldn't be bad matchups against the Eagles, but they're more complete teams with their offense. So... I don't like those matchups as much. Yeah, I mean, Bo Jackson, neutralizing Bo Jackson and uh, Marcus Allen. Uh, they do have fast pass speed, the Raiders. That's what the Raiders have over the Bears. Uh, Jay Schrader, he could throw, he's throw some heat in there. So if he gets any accuracy going, their pass game can be dangerous. But they, the Raiders also have a strong defense to try to contain Randall Cunningham as well. So I'm going to get into a game here. The chat box is open. I will respond to the chat box throughout the course of the game. So I'm going to match up Eagles and Bears.
Alright, so... It was brought to my attention today by another Tecmo player slash YouTuber, um, Troy GB Lan. He watched some of my videos and uh, apparently he heard me talk about how, you know, I'm an average to a poor, to a, yeah, an average tapper in this game. So, what I mean by tapper is you're tapping to break tackles and also tackle the ball carrier. So, there's a method that of tapping the A button that I was unaware of trying. And that's basically flicking your thumb like this. Well, that's kind of annoying, but flicking your thumb on the controller in between the contour and instead of actually lifting your thumb or your index finger, you're just trying to hit the bottom and the top of the button to maximize your button presses. So I'm going to try that throughout the course of this game and see how it goes. But i got to break some bad habits if I'm going to do that. So I don't know if I'll be able to get into a rhythm to uh, break tackles or tackle people like that. You like the Chargers Lions matchup? Yeah, that's that's a middle of the road matchup. You'll see that matchup a lot. If you call that matchup, it would be a good one to pick. The Chargers and the Lions. They both have strong run games, poor pass poor passing games, and uh I would say the, the Chargers have a little bit of an advantage on the defensive end, but the Lions have those two running backs. They have Barry Sanders and also Mel Gray to give you some speed there. And you could also put Mel Gray at receiver. And I had a little bit too much caffeine today, so me getting the coordination down for this uh, new tapping method so far isn't working too good. I might have to go back to my uh, old tapping method and... Uh, by just lifting my thumb and pressing an A and then uh, practice it and get back to it. Because I can't have the Bears uh, beat me in this game. I also noticed on the screen the Eagles are kind of hard to see on the field because they match the field with their green jerseys. I don't know if that's an advantage or disadvantage. It's kind of like camouflage. So the playbook I picked is kind of Eagles specific. That pass four, whether it's that play I'm picking or not with the uh, four wide receivers, you want to pick a play where Randall runs. Um, there's also a good shotgun play with trips on the right side where you get a lot of blockers and you also run left like that. So that's a good one to pick. But uh, I didn't like that pass play as much, so I just went with this one. And they're expecting Randall to run in this game. So a lot of time, what you're going to do, though, with the Eagles, and see, right there, my normal D-pad pressing, or my normal muscle memory tells me I shouldn't be that close to the sideline. But since I'm using Randall Cunningham, I have to adjust. So you might have to, you might screw up your first few plays, that's alright. So how does Madison go? Who picks the matchup? Can you pick your favorite team? So this is the way the Tecmo Madison uh, matchup choosing goes. So basically, there's a coin toss. The winner of the coin toss can either defer the matchup, and take player two, so they take the second controller, and they take player two, and then your opponent picks the matchup, and then you pick what team you want. So they, they pick both teams. You can also take controller one if you win the coin toss, and pick the matchup, and then you get, and then your opponent picks which team they want, 
and then uh, you're left with the other team. So, I know it's, it's a little bit confusing. It's hard every time I have to say it. Um, but it is, I, I really do like the method because it makes you try to pick two equal teams. You can't pick like a lopsided matchup like Giants Colts because obviously your opponent would pick the Giants over the Colts. So that's why it's important to do these kind of videos for first time tournament entries in the Techno Madison tournament. Um, because you need to be prepared with each team, know their strengths and weaknesses. Because if you don't, the elite players almost had that jumping pick. The elite players will take advantage of that, and you don't want that to happen. So, as long as you know your where your strengths and weaknesses are at each with each team, that will that will keep you in contention. Oh, I can't get that pick. All right, forced him to punt. So the other thing you want to do throughout the course of the game is check your conditions on offense. You want to see if your players have went down or up, and you might want to make some substitutions. With the Eagles, it's important to do at running back because Drummond and Heath Sherman have the same um, natural speed at and maximum speed, which is a 38. So Sherman's still at average at 38. Drummond go up? No, he's still at average. So I just leave that. Byers is the same. Eagle QB Eagles is staying in no matter what. With Randall, you, ooh, you missed that. With Randall on a shotgun play, you'll have. A little bit more time to make a decision because he's fast dropping back. So that's always nice. Um, if you pick a couple shotgun plays, it's going to be tough to bring Randall down quickly even if you blitz and guess the play right. So do I like the Eagles? I do like using the Eagles to be honest. I just don't think um, I'm that great using the Eagles versus using some other teams. If I was given this matchup, Eagles versus Bears, I would have a hard time picking the Bears just because their quarterback situation is so poor. If you feel like you can make Mike Tomzak work at quarterback or Jim Harbaugh, because Jim Harbaugh's got a little bit of us. He's a little bit of a scrambler with a 25 maximum speed. You can do that. You can give it a shot. But don't be surprised if you make that one mistake and throw a pick. It's not going to be good for you. Neil Anderson running all over the field. Second quarter. Honestly, with the Bears, if you have, I knew that was going to turn out well. The other thing with the Eagles, you know, if, if you're used to playing as a defensive back, um, user controlling a defensive back, you got to try to get used to using the linebackers. I know with a lot of other teams, I like to use either one of the two safeties or one of the two defensive backs. And I'll occasionally use a linebacker to drop back in coverage or blitz. But with the Eagles, you're really not choosing your defensive backs. If you do choose any of them, you choose Eric Allen because he has better hitting power. But he's only a 44 maximum speed. And you can't check the defensive conditions throughout the course of the game, even though they might go up and down. So you just kind of got to get a feel for if his condition goes up or not, and he's a little bit faster. And there it is, the zigzag. Important to know how to... Yeah, Neil Anderson definitely blasted me. Um, it's important to know how to zigzag against the drones, because the last thing you want to do is 
have your user, have the opponent's user control defender laying on the ground because he got knocked over, and then you can't complete the play because you didn't zigzag properly against the drones. The Vikings, the team you play most. Wilson is decent. Pass speed accuracy 44. After eight completions, he might be at excellent condition. Yeah, a lot of people like to use the Vikings. It seems like Wilson is good at throwing some floaty passes that result in JJs or jumping catches, jumping jackass. So that does happen. Yeah, the Tecmo Juke is the zigzag. But if you come to the tournament and you play some of these players, you'll see other jukes that aren't quite a zigzag. And you'll be pretty impressed, I must say. But yeah, you know, the Vikings are a good team. You might even try to match them up against the Eagles. But uh, the Vikings, they don't... Herschel Walker's only at 44 maximum speed. At running back, Anthony Carter's got some speed on him. Chris Carter wasn't ready yet. So, it, you know, I just took a sack right there. There are situations where taking a sack is better than throwing the ball. With Randall, though, you're, you're most likely going to try to do as much as you can, um, even if they come in on the blitz. You can usually break free from it. And there he is, QB Eagles, dominating. So the, the skill level that your opponent may or may ha not have with Randall Cunningham, it's kind of a, a hidden a hidden thing that you just don't know about unless you've been to previous tournaments or watched some of the tournaments online where they might have used the Eagles. But I feel like picking an Eagles in a matchup is always a risk because your, their, your opponent might be like, ah, I kind of want to use the Eagles. There's a Randall, I just want to prevent my opponent from using him. Or, you know, the person that the Eagle matchup gets called might be licking their chops, like, I can't wait to tear this. Tear this game wide open with Randall Cunningham, there's no way he's going to stop me, and that's what you risk. You would match the Vikings and Eagles, but those are my teams, and they are balanced enough. Yeah, I would say that's another wild card matchup, Vikings Eagles. The Eagles aren't they're they're just lopsided in talent, you know. They they do have weaknesses and Randall covers up especially the offensive weaknesses. Too bad you can't put Randall Cunningham and there's a jumping catch for Keith Jackson. You can't put Randall Cunningham as a, like a kick returner. Or uh, defensive back. Well, he would definitely help as a defensive back, as slow as the defensive backs are for the Eagles. All right, the Bears are at the point where they're not doing too much on offense. Dick is furious about it. The Bears. In 1991, I believe they went 11 and 5, so they were they won the division. So based off the 1991 results, these were two equal teams, 10 and 6. The Brad Musters popcorning, just blasting through. It's something about running. For example, Ernest Biner and Mike Rozier have the same rushing speed and maximum power. Ernest Biner has 81 ball carry while Rozier has 50. Why does Biner run smoother? The same for Herschel, but he's probably yeah, he's probably fumbling. Yeah, um, I don't know. It, it's one of the reasons that you might feel like Biner's running smoother because. The Redskins offensive line is really good. Um, off the top of my head, I'm not sure what the Falcons offensive line 
is doing, but I'm sure it's not as good as the Redskins' offensive line. So that might play a factor into why he feels like he's smoother, because he's actually getting better blocks from the offensive linemen. Yeah, the, the Falcons were in the playoffs this year, to my surprise. They were 11-5, and five, and actually the... Or they were 10-6, and six, and... Um, the Saints were 11 and 5, won the division, and the 49ers missed the playoffs at 10 and 6. So that that was pretty shocking to me that 1991 the 49ers and the Giants missed the playoffs. With the Bills, they didn't miss. They went 13 and 3 and lost in the Super Bowl. Yeah, Falcons lost to the Redskins. So, if you don't have human opponents to play against, the best thing to do is go to week 17 of the season or play the playoffs because the AI is juiced up and they are harder to play against. So, that's what I would do if you don't have user opponents. And they won the Super Bowl in 92. Who won the Super Bowl in 92? The Falcons? Red Barnett, touchdown, diving catch. Randall is truly the ultimate weapon in Tecmo Super Bowl. You know, it's too bad that he didn't put his name into this game because if he did, you might be seeing Randall Cunningham on all these Kia commercials instead of Bo Jackson. I mean, don't get me wrong, Bo Jackson is the fastest running back in this game. And he is great, and he's, he's tough to stop, but Randall is the ultimate weapon because of his passing ability and speed at quarterback. Yeah, I got, I got a few jokes that come to me spontaneously. So the Bears, Eagles pouring it on. So if you do choose the Eagles in a matchup in the tournament, you really want to just keep pouring it on offensively. Utilize Randall Cunningham wisely. Also, if, you, if you're fighting for extra yardage with Randall, I would suggest just getting out of bounds. You want to keep his condition up. You don't want a high probability of fumbling. He avoids that pass block right there. Sherman's feeling good. And the Bears can't stop him. I wish that in Tecmo Super Bowl, if you're playing the computer, you can switch to player two. But you gotta get you gotta play a human opponent to get on the other side of the field. For anyone that is not has not played in the tournament, I would suggest playing online. I know I suggested Tecmo Player Circuit TPC before, but it's it seems like it's really cooled off as far as games played at this point. I haven't been an active participant in it for probably about five or six years, but that's a good place to start if you want to get some online games in. And there's the result. So QB Eagles, I really didn't use his running ability too much. I only have 14 yards with him. It's probably because I took some sacks. But look at that completion rating for QB Eagles. Randall Cunningham, 91%, 418 yards. Wow, I'm so proud I beat the computer on preseason. 49 to 21. Redskins won in 92, so they are supposed to be the crates on this game. Yeah, the, the Redskins, I would say they got a fair rating, even though in the 1990 season they they made the playoffs, I believe, at like 10-6. and six. Um, But uh, Ripon Rippin, he's the one who, who sh could have got a better rating and didn't. So he's really the only, um, I feel like, the big obstacle when you play with the Redskins is 
you know, throwing poor passes with him. But everyone else on the Redskins is pretty good. They're they're a solid team. So we took a look at the Philadelphia Eagles today. We gave you a couple matchups. We showed you what Randall can do on the field. QB Eagles with his speed. And, uh, you know, you might just want to surprise your opponent and throw an Eagles, Eagles in a matchup. I would do it against the Raiders or Bears, but if you feel comfortable with another matchup, you know, like we said, Vikings, Bengals, Chiefs, maybe even the Dolphins thundered, you know, Dan Marino. So, um, next breakdown will be, oof, the Phoenix Cardinals, Arizona Cardinals. So they're the next one up on our list. You might see them called in Tecmo Madison. So you better be ready to use them or defer them. All right. Well, thanks for everyone who commented during the stream. If you see this video later, comment and let me know if you would play the Eagles in a tournament in this format at Tecmo Madison. Thanks, everybody, for watching.